What's going on, everyone? Welcome to another episode of the Tico Fantasy Football Show. Whoop! Today, we are going over three wide receivers who were affected by some trades that happened in the past week. There's been so much going on with free agency, and I don't even know where to begin. There's, there's just so much happening. But, before we get on into it, go follow my TikTok, people. I'm posting on there every day, three to four TikToks, maybe a little bit less, maybe two. But you know what I mean. I'm posting on TikTok every single day. That's the first people who are seeing what I'm talking about and how I feel about things for fantasy football. And I'm going to push that away now, and let's get into today's episode. Alrighty, so the first person we are talking about today is Tyreek Hill to the Miami Dolphins. The Chiefs did trade him, and this was just such a weird situation. I woke up in the morning, nothing about Tyreek Hill at all. 30 minutes later, he's trying to work out a deal with the Chiefs. Another 10 minutes later, it's not working out. Another 30 minutes later, he's traded to the Miami Dolphins. This all happened in probably the span of two hours, maybe. That, Or at least that's all we heard on, the, on our side, but it, it just made no sense. It happened so quickly. But the Dolphins gave them a first, a second, two fourths, and a sixth rounder for him. And on top of that, they paid this guy some big money. They gave him $120 million on a four-year deal. So Tyreek Hill is going to be in Miami for quite a long time. But what does this mean for fantasy football? Obviously, Tyreek Hill is not going to be the same high-end wide receiver one that we've seen in the past. It's just, it's not possible. Tua cannot maintain Tyreek the same way Patrick Mahomes could. And... I, I, I totally understand it. I think that his rankings are probably, him in the rankings are probably going to take the biggest hit out of anybody out of this trade. But I still think he's going to be a nice mid to low end wide receiver one who maybe you'll snag in the second round of your draft who that's about the right value for him. I mean, he's not going to be this crazy guy that we used to see in the past, or maybe he will be this crazy guy that we see in the pa- that we saw in the past. Because we don't know what Mike McDaniel's going to do. That guy's a wild man. We have no idea what scheme he's going to implement. It might be completely Shanahan. It might be a completely new thing that's all Mike McDaniel. And we have no idea. But for the moment, Tyreek Hill is a low-end wide receiver one in my opinion. But the other side of this trade that people are talking about that is irritating me a little bit is the fact that they're moving Jalen Waddle down so much in these rankings. I don't get it. I've seen people ranking him at 25, 26, 24. Like, I don't think Jalen Waddle takes as big of a hit as Tyreek Hill does. Tyreek Hill is going to take a massive hit. That guy was a top three wide receiver, and now he's like 11 or 12. But Jalen Waddle's still a top 15 guy, I think. I think this, I'm not going to say it helps him because you're obviously taking targets away from him, But I feel like this is going to give Jalen Waddle a bigger opportunity to spread the field a little bit and help himself. And also, I think Jalen Waddle is just as good as Tyreek Hill. Yes, I'm saying it. He's five years younger. He's arguably just as fast. And he produced almost as well as Tyreek Hill last year. I think, I might be wrong, but I think Jalen Waddle may have finished higher than Tyreek Hill in fantasy football last year. But... I don't think Jalen Waddle should be taking as big of a hit as he is. And so, if I'm you guys, I'm going out there and I am buying low on Jalen Waddle because if you can get him for a first round pick in Dynasty, like a, a back of the first round, a middle of the first round, you are getting a steal. You are getting a young wide receiver who has already established himself in this offense. And I think that's the biggest thing to take away from this is that it is a good time to go get Jalen Waddle. But. Tyreek Hill is going to take a big hit, and Jalen Waddle's not going to take as big of a hit. But the real question here is, is Tua going to be good? I think that question didn't really make any sense. I kind of worded that wrong. But will Tua be good or not? That is the big question here, and that is the determining factor for all of this. Tua could be absolutely garbage, and both of them could be horrible. Or Tua could take a huge step like Josh Allen did in his third year and be a demon. We have no idea what's going to happen, but for right now, I think Tyreek Hill is a low-end wide receiver one, and I also think Jalen Waddle is a low-end wide receiver one. I think they should be ranked at the same exact spot. So real quick, I was wrong on this stat. Jalen Waddle finished at 13, and Tyreek Hill finished at 6. I don't know where I got that idea in my head that Jalen Waddle finished higher. I don't know. It just, it just seemed that way at the end of the season. But next, the next person we are talking about 
is someone I probably should have already talked about by now. It is Devontae Adams to the Raiders. The Packers traded him for two prime picks. Don't really know what that means. But one of them was a first rounder. And on top of that, the Raiders gave Devontae Adams a $141 million contract for five years. So we will be seeing Devontae Adams on the Raiders for quite a while. But what does this mean for fantasy football? I don't think it means anything. I don't think it means anything. I think Devontae Adams is still going to be this top five wide receiver we've seen in the past. I don't think it affects his value at all. And I think this actually helps us because now I've seen Devontae Adams in mock drafts going in the middle of the second round, back of the second round. And I love that. I love that value. You're going to see me taking a lot of Devontae Adams stock when the time comes, if he's going in that range still. I think Devontae Adams is still a top three guy, especially now that Tyreek Hill is on the Dolphins. I think that helps us out even more. I think there's only one wide receiver better than him, and it's Cooper Cup. I think Justin Jefferson and Jamar Chase are both not as good as Devontae Adams. And I think him being on the Raiders, I think the only thing it does is just lowers his ceiling just a little bit. Maybe he won't have these 35, 37-point games. Maybe he'll have 29, 28-point games. But okay, I don't care. I'll take him either way. If he's getting those type of numbers, I do not care. So I think the biggest thing we have to look at here is how this affects Hunter Renfro's value. And I feel like Hunter Renfro now becomes like a, like a Tyler Lockett type of player where they're the number two on their team, but they still can give you some really good value. And I love Hunter Renfro. I think he is a better Tyler Lockett. I think he's a Tyler Lockett who has the same ceiling, but a way higher floor. I think uh, Hunter Renfro is someone you could throw in at your flex, and you're guaranteed between 10 and 13 points easily just because of the amount of catches that he gets right over the middle, right in the middle of the field, or a little, the little passes he gets. He's just he's an easy option for Derek Carr to hit, and I don't think it, it's going to hurt him a little, but he's not going to be this. He was a wide receiver one last year. I think he actually finished. Did he finish? He finished a top 10 wide receiver right at 10 in PPR. So we're not going to see that again, but I still think he's going to be a top 20 guy. And the other guy who takes, I don't think he takes a hit. I think this guy actually gets a little bit of help here is Darren Waller, because now we are able to spread the field a little bit. And Darren Waller is going to probably maintain that same exact type of value as long as he can stay healthy, because he is a little older now. I think he's 29. I think he's going to be 29 this year. I might be wrong on that. Got to gotta fact check that one. But I think the biggest guy who takes a hit here is Josh Jacobs. I think the whole running game for the Raiders is going to dial back significantly. I think Josh Jacobs is going to get way less carries now, but he is going to get a lot more uh, red zone work uh, on the goal, goal line work where he could possibly get more touchdowns. So if you draft him, you're drafting him on that idea that maybe he'll get a lot less yards, but he'll have a lot more touchdown opportunity. So he'll be a good late round flyer as well. Somebody who you could grab in the fifth round who could be a decent RB2 for your team. But for fantasy football purposes, I think Devontae Adams is still a top two wide receiver. So the next guy I'm talking about is not on that same level as Devontae Adams and Tyreek Hill. He's a little worse, but he is a little cheaper. It is Juju Smith-Schuster. And this whole entire Chiefs passing offense, to be quite honest, what's going to happen here? What is going to happen here? Travis Kelsey is getting a little old. He's probably going to start falling off a little bit. And they're, they lost a lot of wide receivers. They lost Byron Pringle, Demarcus Robinson, and Tyreek Hill. <laughs> Tyreek Hill, their best guy. There are a lot of vacated targets on this Chiefs team. And now they have two picks back-to-back, 28-29, and Juju Smith-Schuster and Miko Hardman. So what's going to happen here? What is going to happen? And I think Juju Smith-Schuster, I, I think he has to, he's in a perfect situation. I think he has to be good. I don't think there's like any reason that he's not good unless he gets hurt. That's literally the only reason. And that's a very possible possibility because the past two seasons in a row, he's been hurt. But if he isn't hurt, I think we should be looking at him as a high-end wide receiver too, maybe even like a top 15 guy if 
if they only get a rookie wide receiver on this team and they don't go and get Julio Jones or one of these other veterans, Jarvis Landry, one of these veterans that are out there right now, and it's only going to be Juju Smith-Schuster, Miko Hardman, and this rookie wide receiver, we are going to see Juju have one heck of a season. It is going to be a great year for him. I think he's going to be an over... Th- an, where did this a little weird? Over a thousand yard wide receiver. And I think he's going to be darn good if they only have a rookie, Juju, and Miko Hardman. If it's only those three, Juju's going to be in a really, really good situation. And I think this is the perfect time to either sell Juju if you don't believe the hype or buy Juju if you do believe the hype. If you want to sell him, sell him. You're going to get the highest price right now just because nobody knows what's going on. And if you're going to buy him, you're probably going to get the lowest price right now because nobody knows what is going on. But I really hope he does good. I would like to see old Juju Smith-Schuster back. That would be really fun and entertaining to see, especially with Patrick Mahomes. And this offense is so explosive. He fits in perfectly. And I really hope that this works out for him and that maybe we'll be drafting him next year as a wide receiver one. So that's all we got for today. Thank you guys for watching. And please like, subscribe, follow us on TikTok. I swear, my TikToks are great. It's the same exact content you're getting on here, but way quicker as soon as news happens. And they got a lot of information. And it's my opinion immediately. It's good stuff follow the TikTok. And also, follow the Instagram. It's a good place to know when we're posting and where we're posting and what we are doing. And I'm going to push that away now. And please follow those two social media accounts. I'm kind of dying off on the Twitter. I haven't really been using it that much because like, what information am I going to give you guys on Twitter? You'd be better off following the TikTok or the Instagram. And also, very soon, I'm going to have my very first ever Tico 2022 rankings, my own personal rankings, PPR and half PPR. It'll probably be pretty close to the same exact thing, so it really doesn't matter. But yes, I will have my rankings coming out. And guess what? They're free. They are free. Because I don't want to charge you guys. Why would I charge you guys? That's wrong. I don't want to do that. I want you guys to get my information. I want you guys to get inside my head and see what I am thinking. And... I think that's about it. I think that is about it. Thank you guys for watching the Tico Fantasy Football Show. Have a wonderful day, everybody.